Today, stupid promises collide with reality as housing targets won't be met. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, this post covering finance and property as well. The New South Wales government has already announced plans to build more than 200,000 homes and to focus on higher density living by building up, not out. But now the New South Wales Premier, Chris Minns, says the state will not meet its housing target, but it is doing its best to boost supply. Their plan included 138,000 new homes in rezoned sites in 31 suburbs and 47,800 homes near eight major transport hubs, with the latter to be completed over the next 15 years. Those suburbs include Bankston, Bays West, Bella Vista, Crow's Nest, Homebush, Hornsby, Kellyville and Macquarie Park. And the government will offer developers in those zones a fast-track approval process called a state significant development to ensure apartments are built quickly and it will be offered to developments over $60 million and construction must start within two years of approval. And by the way, the government also intends to relocate Rose Hill Racecourse and replace it with 25,000 homes as part of the plan. But the housing industry sector is saying that they're not surprised by the New South Wales Premier's admission that the state will not meet its housing targets agreed just last year. The target, which was set by the federal government in August, would need to see around 75,000 new dwellings a year over the next five years. It's part of a broader plan to build 1.2 million homes across Australia during that period. But Premier Chris Min said the government would fall short of the goal, but was working on building as many houses and units as possible to alleviate housing shortages and skyrocketing costs. Planning Minister Paul Scully said the Premier was being upfront with people before blaming the former coalition government over the crisis. We're working off a big backlog that we inherited from the previous government, but we're determined to make sure we get there in the future, he said. I think a fair-minded person looking at the current climate would understand that we're working off less than a standing start to try and make up for the housing crisis we inherited from the previous government. And Mr Scully said the government was currently working through a series of reforms to boost supply. We've already introduced, and we're introducing and implementing this year, a series of the biggest planning reforms in a generation, which will deliver thousands of homes over the coming years, he said. We're not looking at one year in particular. We're looking at a pipeline of housing supply into the future. And when asked how many homes the government was planning on delivering, Mr Scully said he was not putting a number on the table. But housing and construction industry leaders say there is only so much the government can do. Property Council of New South Wales Executive Director Katie Stevenson said short-term problems in the housing sector should not be allowed to sabotage long-term goals to build more affordable homes. Ms Stevenson said the state still had a commitment to build almost 380,000 homes over the next five years, And she said that must remain the goal despite significant challenges the state will face. Among those challenges are exceptionally high building costs. We've got a lot of development going on here in New South Wales and infrastructure, but also in other states. We've got Olympic infrastructure being built just over the border in Queensland, and that's drawing traders away. Master Building Association Executive Director Brian Sader agreed that finding tradespeople would be difficult, but also said many prospective homeowners were holding off committing to new projects because of high interest rates and the rising costs. In the commercial sector, particularly when we're building apartment buildings, the developer, that is the people who are putting up the money, are going to need the planets to align so that the outcome for them is worth going into the project. And if it isn't, those sort of people, those sort of projects get put on hold, he said. The Urban Task Force CEO, Tom Forrest, said the current housing crisis had been developing for many years and years will be required to remedy it. It takes years to create the sort of crisis that we find ourselves in, in terms of the speed of the planning system, a number of building approvals, he said, and yes, it takes, frankly, years to fix it. The government was never committed to 75,000 in year one. 
Mr Forrest said the former government had left a complete disaster for the current government to fix by not delivering enough homes, and the former government slammed the brakes on before the 2019 election, and we're suffering now the results of that, he said. And he said he hoped that planning approvals would increase steadily and possibly go above the target towards the latter part of the five-year period. Opposition leader Mark Speakman said that Mr Mims had failed his biggest test and cannot be trusted because he could not meet the target. This embarrassing acknowledgement the New South World won't reach his targets, agreed, at only, agreed only in last August, is a result of Chris Min's back-of-envelope approach to addressing the ongoing rental and house affordability crisis that is affecting people right across New South Wales, he said. Now, the three points I want to make here. Firstly, we have a significant gap between the capacity to deliver and what is required because of many bad decisions taken over the last two decades. But of course, nobody wants to talk about the elephant in the room, too high migration. Step one should be to dial back migration. Step two must be to institute better supervision of building and construction, particularly of high rise and particularly in New South Wales. As I reported recently, we have too many defective buildings being thrown up at the moment and all of this additional impetus being spoken about by the New South Wales government will just force more people to build cheap and to build bad. So we need those checks and balances in place. Thirdly, of course, this whole issue of where you build and what you build is being, again, distorted by the construction sector itself. They want to build higher, they want to build cheaper, and they want more government money to help them. This is not a good look when it comes to working out what to do. So I would argue that it is true MIMS is right, they're not going to be able to meet their targets. And really, if they wanted to meet their targets, they need to go about it in a very different way from the way they've been going about it, which means that a lot of this is smoke and mirrors and talk. There is a path to solving the problem, but that path is different from the one being laid out currently. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge, and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au. And if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.